Good afternoon. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill, and this is Evening Prayer for Friday, June the 17th. It's the first week after the week of Pentecost, at week five in the Psalm Cycle. And please join me. O oh God, come to my assistance. Make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. If you dwell in the shelter of the Most High, you shall live in the shadow of the Almighty. Alleluia. Psalm 91. Please recite it with me. Alleluia. If you dwell in the shelter of the Most High, you shall live in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of God Most High, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. God will cover you, and under God's wings shall you find refuge. God's truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the plague that walks in darkness, nor the sickness that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. With your eyes you shall behold and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made God most high your refuge, the most high your stronghold, no evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come near. For God shall give the angels charge over you to keep you safe wherever you go. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. You shall trample underfoot, because you love me. Therefore I will deliver you. I will set you on high, because you have known my name. You shall call upon me, and I will answer. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. And with long life will I satisfy you, and show you my salvation. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all the eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. If you dwell in the shelter of the Most High, you shall live in the shadow of the Almighty. Alleluia. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 2, beginning at verse 25. Circumcision, indeed, is of value if you obey the law. But if you are a transgressor of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So, if the uncircumcised keep the requirements of the law, will not their uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Then the physically uncircumcised person who keeps the law will judge you who, though having the written code and circumcision, are a transgressor of the law. For a person is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision something external and physical. Rather, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not the written code. Such a person receives praise not from humans, but from God. Then what advantage has the Jew? Or what is the value of circumcision? Much in every way. For in the first place, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some were unfaithful? Will their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Although every human is a liar, let God be proved true, as it is written, so that you may be justified in your words, and you will prevail when you go to trial. But if our injustice serves to confirm the justice of God, what should we say? That God is unjust to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. By no means. For then how could God judge the world? But if through my falsehood God's truthfulness abounds to his glory, why am I still being judged as a sinner? And why not say, as some people slander us by saying that we say, let us do evil so that the good may come. Their judgment is deserved. Here ends the lesson. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions. 
for those who are strangers and travelers, that we may welcome them as Christ, and for those who are alone. For all who are sick, that they may be protected and find courage and hope in your mercy. For all who serve in harm's way, and for the victims of terrorism and violence. For the resolve of the nations to address the climate change crises. For Brenda and Brian, and for all who are in recovery and rehab, for the aged and the infirm, especially those with suffering from dementia. For those struggling with addiction, especially Bill, strengthen their resolve and restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. For the mercy of God community, for Brother Joe, Brother Tom, Brother Todd, Brother Richard, Brother Bill, Brother Max, Brother Bill, and all the Mercy of God associates. For all who died, especially George, Brother Walter Arthur and Father Tom. For prisoners and captives, for the persecuted and for refugees, that they may be judged in righteousness and find freedom in your truth. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, Holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lead us in triumph over all enemies and keep us safe from every evil in the shelter of your loving kindness. We ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Bless Jesus, my soul, and may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia.